Let, let's flip it, Jack. From a from a Hurricanes offensive standpoint, they've got Tyler Van Dyke back. But look, it, with what the Red Hawks have been able to do defensively in their conference, you know, led the conference last year in scoring defense, third in total defense. Uh, they've been number one in run defense last year. They've been top four every year since 2016. Defensively, we'll, we'll break down kind of by, by position group, but defensively with what the Red Hawks want to do, what do you say about this defense? Certainly got experience with the, with those seven starters, full-time starters coming back. Other guys certainly have, have starting experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you look at last year when Miami played Kentucky, um, who at the time was ranked number 20th in the nation, they played Cincinnati. Uh, two pretty good teams, you could say. And they kept the games close, especially in the first half. They kept the games really close. They were able to play good defense, honestly shut down those two offenses, including kind of shutting down Will Levis for a half, who obviously didn't have the type of season that a lot of people expected him to have last year. But I, I think for this Miami defense, they're going to come out playing really hard. Um, it's going to be hot, as you very well know. Uh, it's going to be humid, I'm guessing. And they're going to be on that away sideline, which the sun beats down on, as we all know. So I think in the first half, they're going to be at least have some success, and they're going to be coming out playing really hard. And remains to be seen whether they can – keep that going in the second half. They haven't really been able to in games against power five top tier opponents in the past, but you never know. Maybe this year is different. Sure. And even though the, the hurricane switch offensive coordinators, uh, Shannon Dawson, their new offensive coordinator has done really well throwing the ball, you know, and mm -hmm. that's been a, a key point for him, but I still think Miami hurricanes want to run the ball under coach Cristobal. I think that will be something that they want to establish, even though they've got more experience with Tyler Van Dyke, more production at that quarterback position as a whole. I still think the Hurricanes want to run the ball, and I, I feel like uh, Coach Dawson mentioned the other day that they're going to have running back by committee. So I think they're going to try to run the ball, and I think that'll be an interesting matchup. I think certainly from a Hurricane standpoint, a key matchup in this game, if they're able to run the ball against a, a team that, that has had success in the past uh, with its run defense. What has gone well? You know, what goes, Why has run defense been so good uh, for the Red Hawks in, in recent years with Coach Martin and certainly last year with what this team is bringing back? Yeah, so a lot of it has been, uh, you know, in my opinion, has been the linebackers. Matt Salopek one of a really, really good athletic linebacker, but he's big enough at 6'1", 230 to stuff the run. Uh, he plays pretty well in coverage too, but he can really uh, get up there and stuff the run. And then last year they had Ryan McWood there at linebacker as well. And McWood was in his seventh year at Miami uh, due to the COVID year, an injury redshirt year and a normal redshirt year. So he was playing his seventh year, really experienced guy. And he was kind of the lifeblood of that defense. It was a big loss not having him back. Um, but I think a lot of that success in stopping the run did come from linebackers. And now that's not to say that they don't have a talented defensive line because Caden Millard, Austin Ertl, Kobe Hilton, Brian Uwu, and Uwu is not even, uh, starting according to the depth chart, Corey Suttle, a lot of big athletic guys who play hard and are able to get in there and stuff the run. But I think it's really just kind of a synergy of the defensive line and the linebackers. They return most of those important guys this year. Uh, but I think the loss of McWood is going to be a really big one. We'll see if they're able to overcome that. Jack, this, this is another area where I think it's going to be big for the Hurricanes in this game because they want to throw the ball deep. They don't do it. Right. They didn't do very well last year with this. Uh, again, flip the coordinators. Quarterback, multiple quarterbacks have been talking about how they're going to be able to do it. Their wide receivers are certainly confident. Look, we're going to throw deep. We're, we're excited. They, they added some speed in Tyler Harrell from the outside, uh, one of the fastest players in the country. So they feel like they're going to go deep. And I was looking at Miami, Ohio's pass defense last year, seventh in the conference in, in passing yards allowed per game. But one of the things that stood out to me was they allowed eight 100-yard receivers. So certainly at times, wide receivers were able to kind of get loose a little bit last year against the Red Hawks. But yeah, I think that's going to be a fascinating matchup if they're able to keep uh, the, the Hurricanes in front of them. You know, I think that'll be big from the sec secondary standpoint with the Red Hawks. What does the what does the secondary look like this year? Again, saying that with, with you know you've got some familiar faces, but you've already touched on a number of transfers at other spots along the team. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Red Hawks did lose their number one cornerback from last year. John Saunders is going to Ole Miss now. He was a shutdown guy. Um, I remember in the first four weeks of the non-conference weeks last season, I think he had 
he only had one or two picks, but he got his hands around four balls. Uh, two of them ended up being picks or one of them, but he could have had four picks in those first four games. So that's going to be a really big loss. But the guys who they have out there are going to have out there Yasin McKee and Jeremiah Caldwell at the corners, Jaquez Warren and Eli Blakely at the safeties are guys who do have some experience. They're talented guys, uh, three-star recruits, the type that Miami generally deals in. Um, it, it's really just going to, in my opinion, come down to execution for the Hurricanes. Obviously, they have the speed advantage, the physical advantage on the Red Hawks. Red Hawks are going to really have to just keep their stamina going and hope that Miami makes some mistakes. And another thing, um, the Red Hawks last year did a great job forcing turnovers on defense, uh, quite a few interceptions. So, like I said, going to have to hope that Miami makes some mistakes on Friday. Yeah, and the Hurricanes certainly last year with what they did with some of the losses that they had against opponents that they should have beaten and they didn't. Obviously, everybody remembers the Metal Tennessee loss. So certainly this one uh, should be on all of the players' minds, even though they have a number of new new coaches on the staff. Head coach Mario Cristobal is the same. A lot of these players. And I think what's big for the Hurricanes, too, is not looking ahead to the Texas A&M game the following week. We can all do that. Fans, reporters. It's certainly going to be, I think, one of the most pivotal games uh, of the season. There's no doubt about that for that for that game against the Aggies after what happened last year against them. And it's a it's a premier opponent, but the Hurricanes have to take advantage and 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 play well in this opening game, certainly, or else they will get beat. We we've seen that. The Hurricanes are, are not um immune to, to losses like this. So we will see, even though that they do have the, you know, they're certainly heavy favorites. Jack, just overall big picture for the Red Hawks while I have you here, maybe looking ahead to the season. Maybe their goals for the year. What well, again, coming off that six and seven year, regardless of this game, but maybe how they they fit into the MAC. I've seen that some people have them picked to win their division. Maybe kind of how you see the season unfolding, and, and maybe the goals and hopes for this program. Absolutely. So for the Red Hawks this year, it's really kind of MAC championship or bust. They're returning most of the players from the conference best defense last year. They're returning four really good running backs who have had success. They're returning. Four four starters on their offensive line, three starters from all of last year, and then one guy who was supposed to be a starter but got injured. So kind of four starters. Uh, They have Brett Gabbard back. Just really everything seems to be coming together for what should be an excellent season for Miami. I think the ceiling's probably 10 and two or nine and three. Um, Anything worse than eight and four, seven and six, anything worse than eight and four, I think would be a real, real disappointment for the Red Hawks. Uh, So yeah, basically Mac championship is for sure uh, the goal for this Miami Red Hawks season. And then for this game on Friday, I think Miami obviously has a very low chance of winning the Red Hawks do, but if they play their best game, if they play pretty much perfect football and the Miami hurricanes make enough mistakes, like you said, there's always a chance. Yeah, Jack, I appreciate you taking the time. Excellent insight, both sides of the ball and the Red Hawks. Uh, definitely appreciate you and, and hopefully have a good season. Hopefully enjoy the year. Appreciate you. Absolutely. Appreciate you too, Christopher. Thanks for having me on.